Well, hello there, and welcome to my little arty corner of <coughs> YouTube of the internet. And I'd like to say a warm welcome to all my present subscribers, or my old subscribers, which sounds wrong, who are rejoining me this morning, or whenever you're watching this video. And a huge thank you to those who've recently subscribed. And thank you once again for all the comments that are left both with suggestions for things for me to do and lovely comments about the kind of art that I do. Um, it's always very welcome and I'm always open to some suggestions, though I may not always take them on board. Um, suggestions concerning art, not other things. Anyway, what I've got here, I'm going to show you very quickly because yesterday, as you know, I did a Oh, if you watched the last video, yesterday's video, I showed how to, or how I add colour to my backgrounds, colour and pattern, um, before I start drawing. And I like to use distress inks. Well, yesterday, I had all these pieces of paper and I thought, okay then, I've been saying I don't particularly like distress oxides because they clog my pen up. And, and I thought, am I really sure about that? Is it, is it true? So, and I thought I have never used the blending brushes with Distress Oxides. So I thought, right, let's, let's colour these papers with Distress Oxides and I'll go through these if I can remember which ones are Distress Oxides and which aren't. The big difference between Distress Ink and Distress Oxide is Distress Oxide is more opaque and also when you activate it with a light spray of water, it develops this very soft and velvety feel, but it also seems to soften and mute the colours in some way. It reacts differently with water. They are a stronger colour, but I found like this is one that I added with, um, I used the cut and dry foam on this, and I also used a stamp to add some texture, and you can see how much darker that is. Um, but you can also see the spots of water spots on there and that's a big difference is that water really you know really can make a big difference to these it's needed in some way was this is just a distress ink background this one is an old one I made um, a week or so ago old <laughs> one I made previously so there's no water on it or anything um, and that's another distress ink because they're all together now and you can see that one's really lovely. I might keep that one to one side for a moment. This one is as well, that yellowy colour. But here's another Distress Oxide one. Is it Distress Oxide? Yeah, actually it is. You can feel the difference in the surface. The surface has got this different feeling. And here I've got lots of layers where I've picked up colour, added colour, added... You can layer them and because they're opaque, they go over what's underneath. And then it reacts in a very unusual way. Another distress oxide. I'm look and this one's distress oxide, and that one is definitely distress oxide. Much darker than I'd want, but I was playing with colour. That's distress oxide. This one is distress oxide with no no water on it at all. And it has got that soft feel on it, but it really comes to life with water spatters. It really, really does. I think using heat tool changes how the water works as well. Um, I can't explain it. And um, these are the distress inks. So if I pick something that's perhaps of a similar, similar colours, yeah, let me have a look. Um, this one would be similar, a similar colour range to this one. And you can see the difference in how deep this is. And yet there was as little ink on there as there is on this much more intense but I thought right okay and on these I can also see I've got some shimmer and sparkle and I have no idea where that came from <laughs> that's one of the distress ink ones I made yesterday and some and here's here's the others so I've got a rather large number of pieces of coloured paper and I've even got more in my cupboards my filing cabinets here somewhere and I thought, OK, let's give it a try. I didn't do a lot in the way of art yesterday. Um, I really didn't. 
I had to run an errand and then when I came home I just thought I'll sit and watch continue binge watching Criminal Minds and before I knew it it was about 11 o'clock at night so as one does close to the end of all of the series so I've seen it all before but the last couple of seasons I've only watched once I think so this a long while ago and it feels like they're new to me even though they're not they're familiar anyway so this is a distress oxide background and the black stands out against it and I haven't really gone into these areas where there are texture and pattern but I'm, I can do um, and I've got some rather lovely um, patterns going on that have been inspired by looking at medieval illuminated manuscripts. I think I did this sat in bed last night which means that the light isn't brilliant there. I can see the where I've left little gaps and so on. But um, I was just looking at how I can add I'll try and add now the, my hard my d big problem is this is an old pen an old 05 pen and that means that it's coming more or less to the end of its days with me as the nib has got ruined um, as they tend to with me because I'm not exactly light-handed with them. So it's hard for me to tell if the nib is being ruined by the stress oxides. But if you, you know, time will tell. But I'm looking forward to perhaps having Um, perhaps the use of um, some colour on this as well and seeing how that works. Now you can tell that I'm not exactly the world's most confident with these yet and there's a very strange arrangement of things going on here. But I think I'm drawing on this just for the sake of drawing on it and to see what happens. I think the colours I used here were tea dye and seedless preserves. And I used the tea dye, I think it was tea dye, to try and knock that bright colour back. And you can see it does. I put the light colour over the dark here. And that's something else you can do with distress oxides now. Before I go any further, and early on into the video, if you'd like to see me demonstrate Distress Oxides and how little I know about them, I'll do that. The other thing I've done in the past is I've used jelly plates, which are, um, they're like, traditionally they were made out of gelatin, but thank goodness these days they're made out of some synthetic material as well. And they used to make what are called monoprints. So you put the ink onto the jelly plate and then you use paper to, to lift that ink off. So you can actually do patterns that way as well. And it works with all kinds of things like, um, um, what am I thinking of? Paints and um, printing inks and other kinds of materials so that they're a really nice way of doing things as well. It's not something I do too often because it involves getting messy and the use of a brayer. And I'm not very keen on getting messy. Anyway, I'm going to pop this to one side because this really is my test piece because I thought today it would be quite nice if I did a New Year's Day or 2022 pattern. So I'm going to use this because I there's always fireworks on New Year's Eve. I wish people would have quiet fireworks because I get spooked by them and I know that many pets and so on do. And so I'm going to start by drawing 
a border in just in pencil for now it just defines that space within which I want to particularly work and I'm also going to pop uh, somewhere in the centre because this is where I'm going to hand letter hand letter hand number I'm going to hand letter some numbers and um, I'm not using any particular style just part of me thinks oh I could have printed this out on printer paper and used that as a That's something I attach to the middle of this, a bit like um, I've done for cartouches. Um, and perhaps I'll do. I've got to remember it's twenty twenty two. I'm doing this for, so it's going to be a bit of a strange kind of number, but you know what? I'm happy with that. There we go. That fits in that box. It wasn't deliberate to make it fit in the box, but I have done. So my next step is to, I've got choices. I can draw a box around this or I can aura it in true sentangly style. So let's go for the aura ring. And I am using my 05 brush, uh, 05 brush pen. And Ooh, I'm not very good at keeping things equidistant. I try. But I do want to get this. Like that. And there are places like here where I think I'm going to extend this and create a black area. There are other places where I will Add a fair amount of black and weight there just to define the shapes here um, in some way. It's both to try to follow those little areas where there are some between the numbers, between the numerals, the numbers, so that they just feels the right thing to do. It may not be, because doing these things is not a skill I'm particularly good at, it has to be said. But we'll have a look. Okay, so there's 2022. Well, I am going to do another aura around this. And when I do this, I don't start on a corner. I start somewhere like in the middle of a curve or a straight line where I can come back and make a, a neat join. So I find if I do it in the middle of a curve, I can end up with things not joining very well. Here it gives me that space to adjust the angle of the line. And I'm turning my paper as I go because it helps me to both. I've got my right hand in a comfortable place for drawing. But it helps me to see where my pen is. So I'll come back and decide what I'm going to do in the middle. It may be that I end up creating a black, a fairly black background. And I think I might do that because that will really help those numbers to stand out. And for that, I really need a brush pen, but I, perhaps I won't do it now. Maybe. So what I'm going to do next is, I think, if you know me, you know I've got a bit of a thing about diva dance. And this is beginning to look a bit like diva dance, isn't it? Just a bit. And um, so I'm, where these curves go in, I am going to add some extra weight there perhaps a big one here 
because that will really help to connect those lines and smooth that one out. I think that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm, I'm working back and forth and working out how, well, perhaps not working out, but seeing how what I'm doing is, is happening. Is well, happening. Of course it's happening. You're seeing it happen. How it's working out and perhaps how I, how I could make it something that I can really work with. Lots of dark there. So again, I'm going to add just a plain aura. And you see what I just did then? I've just said, oh, I prefer to start somewhere part way along a line and I've gone and put one right on a curve. I'm a contrary so-and-so. Perhaps I should have said, you may find it easier to get a nice, neat connection of lines if you start start and finish on a, a straight edge which is just what I almost didn't do ish so there's that so I could do humps and bumps like traditional um, diva dance but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have some teardrop shapes just naturally lofting away so I'm going to try and make some kind of filigree-ish pattern. Now that one lends itself to carrying on that curve quite nicely, I think. And I'm just looking here, have I got one that I can do the same with here? I think so. I think we can create one here. I always tend to follow the line that they're growing off just that little bit just to give me that kind of it helps with a smooth transition from the straight line to the curved line and i am adding little bits of weighting as it as they call it in zentangle these extra little bits of black that help to instead of having a sharp join you get this nice curved one it also allows you to um, make those little adjustments and tidy things up. I'm going to put a really curvy one in here. This is not my best skill, but we'll just see. So it's going to be all a ring around these now. Trying to keep a fairly similar distance between the, the line I'm drawing and the one below it. But if it varies, it's no big thing because it will just get lost in the whole craziness of the pattern. I'm going to darken that one as I go along because that one I was able to get a curve inside. Some of them you can see I've just gone round them. This one I didn't try. I could get one in there if I extend that and I may go back and do that. But I think it's a bit too close. Whereas ones like this that I can go round, I will. So it's basically a judgment call as to what you feel you're more comfortable to do. With this one, I thought if I try to do that as I'm drawing it, I'm going to end up with a... But there, I can pop, pop it like that now. So I'm starting to get some interesting stuff going on here. I am going to go back and do things like where there are sharp corners whether the corners are inny or outy corners. I'm going to go back and make them smoother by just filling them in with some ink and leaving that nice and curved. And then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to add some more of these very bravely because I'm in danger of wrecking what I've done. 
doesn't take much for me to wreck something like this. And then as I add them, I am rounding them. As we say at the bottom here. Because I just think it's a lot easier to do as I'm going along because I, there's less likelihood of me missing them out if I decide to come back and do them. And just one here and I think I'll have that one curl around a lot more. So again, it's creating this aura. Oh, I missed an opportunity to fill that little dip in there with ink. But it's fine. That one obviously was meant to be that way. Perhaps. With that one I did, I knew as, as soon as I'd gone in there and he had enough space really to add one of these um, little tear, you know, long thin teardrop shapes on a stalk. So I did that while I was working on this. So I'm going to go and add ink around to where there are these dips just to smooth things out. it just helps to create a smoother line to go around a curvier line it also adds that blackness the contrast that's that helps things to stand out but it does help with this because my plan is now that i'm not going to add any more of these i'm going to add one or two more auras just to really get this nice and smooth this is a variation, I suppose, of diva dance in that instead of having the the blobs pointing outwards towards the edge of the paper, they're pointing inwards and they're applied in that direction after you've drawn the line. So it is a version of. This is really doesn't need it but it's going to have some because I really do want that feeling of darkness, drama, contrast. And I'm really testing to see if um, distress oxides destroy my pens more than I destroy them. Okay, this one is going to be an interesting one because I do want to create a nice shape here. So it is trying this out and seeing how I can get it and then I can fill this in. This one needs that kind of smoothing out and creation of that blob. This one will need a little bit more, I think. So I think I can get a nicer line going on there and then this one too can have a nice line this one well as i'm doing this you know it's it is new year's eve and um it's hard to believe we've got through another year in some ways and i know that many of us I've had many sad losses this year. Um, people I know, not family members per se, but perhaps the family of my heart. Um, people I've known well and others who've fallen 
really ill in one way or another. Um, but there have been many happy moments as well, I think. And every day, for me, drawing is, I suppose, one of my big pleasures. But there are many others as well. It's those little chats with friends, even if it's through Messenger or on Zoom or some other similar kind of platform, because it's not easy to meet up with people. It's being able to help people, for me as well, where I can. I've got an immense amount of gratitude this year for all the people who've worked in a way that have helped me to not have to go out and about too often. and. because I am a bit of a scaredy cat out in the world, at the best of times. And at the moment, there's all of everything else that is going on. But hopefully things will improve. I know it's a heck of a time at the moment, yet again. But time will tell. I do think it's important that we do look for those moments of just sheer pleasure every day. Whether it's that morning cup of tea, in my case. I know not everybody drinks tea, but I do. And it's, and you just, oh, that one in the afternoon when I come home from running an errand and I pop the kettle on and make myself some, a mug of tea. And I pick it up and it's just that right temperature to drink. I don't know if you know that that feeling and you just feel that relaxation that comes with it and that pleasure of just enjoying the flavour, the temperature, the texture. And that is a nearly ev nearly everyday pleasure. So though I do let my tea go cold, I get um, wrapped up in doing things. I mean, my breakfast tea is cold here, but I quite enjoy drinking cold tea, which is a bit bizarre. But um. I think it's because I forget about it so much and I just think it's a shame to pour it down the sink. Whose energy has gone into making that? The electricity to boil the kettle and making the tea and the energy that goes in people who grow it. It's a shame to throw it away. This is most probably one of my better versions of things like this. I do have to say that. I'm doing that. Let me just move my paper up just a little bit because I am just a bit, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I think it may need to come this way actually just a bit. That's a bit better. Okay, look, so I think I'm going to do another round of aura here. And then I'm going to decide what I do next. Because this is a particularly weird shape to have here. But I'm hoping I'm going to be able to work with it. In some way, I'm sure I can. I mean, after all, if the beautiful, amazing medieval scribes can work with weirdly shaped things, then I'm sure I can as well. Let's be positive here. So I do want to do something about a lot of these bigger dips. So there may be another aura coming our way just to smooth the whole of these edges out, I think. A lot of black. So I think we're going to need something a lot lighter and airier as a contrast, perhaps. We'll see now. Okay, we've got that one. This one could do with a bit of smoothing out as well. I suppose the way to avoid these weird shapes is to actually draw a rectangle and work to the boundary 
to the bounds of that rectangle or you know um, or whatever shape you decide to put around this central motif but I've decided to leave it weird and random because I've got a sneaky suspicion 2022 will be another weird and very random year actually I think every year is for me weird and random There we go. So that looks a bit, that'll look a bit smoother. I think this one just needs a bit more there. And I am going to pop this in. Now today I need to spend time adding colour to the 2022 Happy New Year colouring templates for the Facebook group. I posted it earlier this week to give everybody a chance to get colouring and of course I haven't coloured. There we go, so that looks nice. What I will do is I'm going to stop the video for a moment because I'm going to go and find, I'm going to colour this in with black which will be tedious and uninteresting and I shall come back to you in a moment. And here we are, back again. So all I've done is fill in around the numerals with black. Now that black is crying out for little gold or white dots, and I'm tempted to use gold. Um, I was thinking about colouring the numbers in gold, but I know I will make a mess of that, possibly. Um, I shall see because there may be a way for me to do this, um, but we shall see. I can see that some of the letters are a bit on the wonky side, or perhaps I can adjust the shape of the letter a little bit here, just to make that one a bit better. I've got a very thin area here, but that is what it is. It's the way it's drawn, so it will be just fine. Now I've got to decide what else I do. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a white, perhaps a wider border around this. I think I'll draw another one around, perhaps a little wider, um, a wider gap between the lines than previously, just to help to bring them To help to separate things. Like that. So that'll work quite nicely. You can see what I mean? If you start somewhere where the, the line's practically flat, it's a lot easier to join them than it is on a curve. So I've got a blobby bit there, but that will disappear. And I'm going to draw a line around this one. Um, it may not be exactly the same width all the way round. I'm drawing it quite quickly and deliberately so because I don't want to fuss around thinking that I have to make it exactly the same width. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to add that aura around here. Because I just think these double lines, almost with that gap between, are a really good way of creating a break between one area of pattern and another. I deliberately made this one wider here because obviously we've got a lot of lines going on. Now here, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do, but I think I want to have something that's contrasting. This is very curvy and smooth and twist, you know, sort of like an undulating kind of organic pattern. So I think I'd rather like something that's a contrast. So I'm just going to split this one up into blocks. Vaguely square shaped. 
the fact that they may not be entirely square shape uh, is neither here nor there. This is the reason I made this line deliberately a bit wobbly and wonky in terms of its wideness. So I've still got that organic feel going, but I'm now going to put something in here that is going to be particularly um, much more structured, I suppose. Now, if I thought I really could have made this quite wide and done one of my famous, or favourite, not famous, um, one of my favourite Romanesque patterns, but what I think I may do here, see, I do love a bit of well, don't I? That's my favourite go-to, um, which is the circle in the middle and the, the bits coming off. So I could do that. I could alternate them, but I run the risk of not knowing how if I've got an even number of these that I'll end up with an odd section. I could do that um, crescent moon that goes, um, fills it in this way, but I don't think so. I could do triangles that chase themselves around. I could do a zigzag pattern, but again, I could run the risk of ending up with a pattern, um, something that doesn't there. So I think what I'm going to do, possibly, which way do I want to do this? Thinking about doing, um, is it flukes? No. There's one where you've got um, a black square in the corner and then a line going out and some, some aura lines between. That's sort of tempting me, but I'm thinking perhaps not. I'm also thinking of doing perhaps triangle shapes in here. That could be quite interesting. Oh, See, my mind always goes back to well, which is not a good thing. I think I know what I'll do instead. I'm going to do this one. The problem with overthinking is that you can become paralysed with the decision. So this one popped in my head and I thought, right, I can go with this. It's a bit like decks, except I'm not drawing cross across the middle, however it's done. There's a couple of ways of drawing this pattern. Different approaches and you end up with the same kind of thing. I just find it far easier to plonk something that's vaguely square shaped somewhere vaguely in the middle and just let the lines do the work of doing whatever. If some of them are off centre, so be it. I don't mind that. I also like this pattern because of the, you get these interesting shapes here and depending on what you focus on, it, you've got diff two different patterns in one with things joined, with the, um, the fragments joined together and it's adding colour or shadow will bring these different ones out. It looks either like you've got squares sticking up or if you focus on these it looks almost like beads in a necklace or bracelet where you've got a, squ a square bead in between and then one of these um, biconical shaped ones. Kind of ones, very flattened one with a square top but so there are different ways of approaching adding colour into these. So I'm going to finish this one off the camera and I'll be back in a in a short one. So there we are, all around. Now I'll decide how I add pattern or shadow to that, which part I want to bring out um, in a moment. But I'm trying to think, what do I want to do with the rest of it? And I am very tempted to do, um, what is it? What's the pattern called? Oh, it looks like the Oogie Boogie Man. Don't ask. Um, oh. Two ticks. Let me go get something. 
Here we are back. This is my sketchbook from, um, which has got mostly um, drawings in from Inktober this year. I did the um, Tangle Patterns Challenge for Inktober and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And having a sketchbook full of pages like this is great inspiration. But I was thinking about Trelina, but I think they could end up, if I'm not careful, looking a bit tentacly. I think we've had enough years with another year with monsters in. It's Dex there. So I'm just having a look as to what I really like this one, the round square, but I you can't see it because it's off screen. This one, the round square, but I don't necessarily think I'm going to fit that in easily here. Um, plie is nice, paradisium is nice, oof, I don't want to do oof, we, do we need anything that is out of focus this year, the oop sneeze, uh, I have trouble drawing this one, they look nice but I'm never happy with the shapes I get, ecstatic's quite nice, moon -esque. You'll see bits of it as we go through. I've got ing there. This one. I do like spines. That one's quite nice, but it's not going to fit well in here. Your Mimi's lovely. Fengli. Fengal is nice, but again, it would end it could end up looking a bit tentacly. I've got um what's this this one? Hirari. Zach. Actually, I think Moriso would be quite nice because it will give me that option to have spaces where I can fill them in with gold or metallic colours, certainly, but add other areas where perhaps I could add some texture or colour and then highlights on, like here. So, yeah, so I think Moriso would look quite nice. It's sort of organic, but it's also got that kind of um, a, a bit more of a structured feel. So I think the first thing I need to do is to decide where I'm going to start with this. And I think we're going to start. With one of these blobs, um, whatever you call them, bricks, blobs, shapes. And I am going to on this one. Add some shadow, thicker lines around them to give it some structure. And I'm going to have one hiding away underneath this and here I'm trying to make these bits look like they're curved and adjoining rather than a straight line so it feels like it might be a, a weather-worn pebble and again I do want to add some weight to some of these lines just to help them Part of me thinks I ought to be putting some weight on this this bigger outside line, but if I try to do that, I know I'm going to mess up. And with Moriso, sometimes you put smaller ones on in between, smaller ones on, smaller ones in between, to just That's a very strange shaped one, but it'll work. Um, it's the. I find that adding that lovely thickness of line really works with these. It instantly makes them feel like they're stones sticking up. And they don't all have to be the same shape. They can be any shape you like. You don't overthink it, you just draw things. And then they get joined together with lines. And I like to add some weight at the bottom of the lines. And I am going to do my best to make sure that I pop some in here that will have lines that join following along the border. If it doesn't work out that way, well it doesn't work out that way. But 
these will be so much fun to add colour to. And those metallic glints as well, which I think just helps so much. Even these diddy ones, these little ones need that thicker line there. So I am going to connect these. It's a long connection, but it will work because I can do that. And I can also connect here perhaps and here just to split it up a little bit. Now, I've been a bit foolish doing that because I could have had those going at different angles. But I think you get the idea. It's a, it's a very simple kind of pattern and yet it is incredibly, um, I find it intriguing, almost elegant, I suppose, in its form. Especially when it's got colour and everything else added to it. And here I've got the edge line, so I'm going to use that as a way of connecting these. But I'm also going to connect these here. And I'm going to have that connect like that. And then like that, I think. Simply because I can. For no other reason. And let's have a look. I'm trying not to have too many parallel lines where I join things and some of these they may have the thicker lines on opposite sides but that then will allow me to play with the illusion of things being coming out of the paper or dipping in if I choose to. So I am going to wander off for a little while. For you it'll be no time at all. I'll come back when I finished just about finished adding Morriso and then we'll have a look at what I do next. See you in a moment. And here we are, back. And I've done all of the Morisot that I think I want to do. Now here comes the hard part. Adding colour and or texture and or gold. And everybody knows how good I am at that, don't they? Well, I'm going to get my gold paint here because I can. And I need a fairly... Try that brush. So I've got plenty of this um, iridescency goldy paint in here. As in, I still have plenty of the micery stuff in here so I can re wet it and get it into a consistency that I like. Um, perhaps or not. That'll work. I think this may just be. Let me have a look, because I do need to pick a fair amount of it up with the brush if I'm going, because I think I am going to be brave and I am going to add it to the numbers. I think so. What does she say? I think so. I'm going to try not to go over the black, but if I do, it's no big problem really in the grand scheme of things because all I need to do is to use a black pen to go over it and uh, it will mostly disappear not entirely but mostly and if I don't get quite up to the line well I think unless somebody's going to look at it with a magnifying glass they won't notice so I'm using a fairly small brush here Size it's a two. So that's the first one done. I'm just checking to see if there's anywhere glaringly patchy or not. I'm just adding a bit more in. There we go, that'll be fine. It's where you have to move your head, your eyes around and check everywhere. So that's the two done. I'll just do the zero and then I'm going to go and do the rest off camera. 
and I'll come back and show you. So I'll be back in a moment again. So there we are. There's the middle bit done. Now what I've done here, you can see my palette. I've had to add some more of the um, the gold um, pigment or powder in, the mica powder. So I'm just adding water to that one. So that's more or less good to go. And um, just add a bit more water. Next door, I've added some copper. And this is Perfect Pearls instead of Cosmic Shimmer. Um, because I didn't see the Cosmic Shimmer one until too late in the tray I've got them in. So they're very similar. Um, I haven't got the lid on this one quite right. But they, they work in the same way. Um, they're just different brands. And there are other brands on the market as well. Um, I'm not sure whether the Cosmic Shimmers still exist. I'm sure the Perfect Pearls do, but I know, I'm sure that Apostive Lavinia Stamps make some and other companies do. Again, it's looking more at the crafty companies. I actually think that um, Arteza has some. I'm sure I've seen some there, but they're mica pigments and they can be used on their own like this, or you can add them to paint, which I've done. Um, I've got some um, aged mahogany over here, which actually would go quite nicely with this. So what I may do is add some aged mahogany um, and use some of the perfect pearls here just to create a paint so that I get that rich redness underneath as well not just the copper but it adds to it if you'd be able to show you the difference but i just thought this these would be lovely to fill in these middle bits now i could go to town with all kinds of colors but i'm pretty much going to keep this fairly monochrome i may mix some gold and copper together to get a different color because that would be quite interesting i think a more yellowy coppery color the secret to using these is to make sure that your brush is really quite um, well charged with the paint um, and that you're not afraid of leaving a big wet area there because the um, it will dry a lot flatter but it will there we go pick up some more of that um, aged mahogany Again, adding colour to these is possible so that you get the gold shimmer but a dark, a different colour background, as it were, or under undertones. So I'm going around, I'm not doing it every other, but I'm just picking out where I pop these. Because I don't want all copper and I don't want all gold. I don't want a predominance of either, I want a, a variation where I can say, that looks nice. Well, that feels balanced in some way. I don't want it to feel contrived either. Um, having said that, I've got round the outsides of these to go as well. So, <laughs> I think in the past it is possible while these are wet to um, sort of put gold at one end and copper at the other and allow them to mix. I'm not doing that here at the moment. But I may very well do so. Let me just clean my copper off. I'm going to pick up some of this gold and I'm going to mix it in here with copper and with the aged mahogany so I've got a different kind of colour. And it's a warmer kind of gold than the one in the middle. Again, I'm not going to put fill everyone in with this one. And I'm not going to try to create any pattern. There may be some where they're next door to each other. There may be others where they're not. I'm just trying to make sure that I get a variation in colour in these. Part of me was looking. I've got these this beautiful blues and other colours that you can use um, with these. I've got so many different ones. Um, but I thought I'd stick to just two. 
picking up some of the gold and adding it to the red mahogany or the, the aged mahogany because it will give a different tone to it and I will pop some more of that one in I'm working quite quickly um, and the more I work with brushes the better my brush skills become or get so just a bit more of the gold if I get a little bit of the aged mahogany in with the gold that's in the tray in the grand scheme of things it's not going to be noticeable so there is I'm beginning to get more and more gold here now and um, if I really go over these lines and have too much in the way of um, the metallic over the black lines then I can go back and um, use a black pen over them but at the moment I'm not too concerned about that to be honest and where I've put this gold one in, you can see this one above is where I've got that aged mahogany mixed in with it. And you can see the difference it makes. It appears subtle, but there is a difference there. And I actually have some um, espresso. I can't remember the, the full name of it. Um, it's one of the brown, the dark brown sort of like coffee coloured, dark black coffee coloured um, distress ink here and I'm popping some of that in here again to add a bit of variation and I'm going to go back to just plain gold because I think this is the last section I'll want to add this to around the outside but now I have The opportunity to think about what do I do with this one here I think I'm going to I think I'll see my mind's thinking because I've got gold there I've got a mixture of gold and bronze here so I'm, bronze copper so I'm thinking about putting copper in these rather than gold I think I'll do it's so hard do you know that do you know how hard it is to work this out I think I'm going to add gold to that aged mahogany and use that so I've got gold but I've got that undertone and I just think that may just be what I'm looking for here so it's somewhere in between the two um, it's not exactly gold and it's not exactly copper. But, um, it's its own warm, sparkly colour. So I think that will work quite nicely. So again, I've got a lot of these to do. So I'll come back when I finish this and then we'll have a think about what else I could do with this. So I'll see you in a moment. Well, there we are, back again. And I've got all of these done around the this this particular board, the very geometric one. And I think you can see that there's definitely distinct um, shine and shimmer there. I'm having trouble getting it to show on the camera. You can see, and you can see all the different colours that I've got, just using a couple of different ones. These perfect pearls or cosmic shimmer. Um, the mica, they're, they're mica they are, iridescent pigments um, they are, um, and using a couple of colours of Distress Ink which were in my palette which was Age Mahogany and um, the Espresso one, I can't remember its name, but it's looking very glitzy and glimmery. Still more work needs to be done to get some shadows and highlights in. And this is where I am going to, if I'm not careful, I am going to completely and totally mess this up. 
I am tempted to use just black line to add shadows or high, you know, darker areas, but I'm also tempted to use either graphite tints or even go with the Ecoline watercolors. And I think I may go with the eco lines. I could use chalk pastels. That is what I seem to have the most success with. So I think I'm going to go with those. I'll just pop my water out of the way. I'll get my pot of chalk pastels up. And I need some colours that will tone in with this, really, or a colour that will. And I'm thinking... I'm thinking perhaps a red, perhaps, um, let's have a look, because I can use different colours in different places, so I am tempted with red to tie in with the orangey background and this lovely coppery colour, so I've got this one here, which is, um, it's a scarlet red, it's from Generals. I have got many other reds here, but I am thinking that perhaps this one may, just may, work quite nicely. Now I am going to get a um, paper stump out. It's quite a thick one, but it'll work fine, because these, these are beginning to sort of like fall to bits. So let me have a look because I can add this colour and then I can use a pen perhaps to put some shadow in or some pattern in. So I'm looking at how I can use this effectively to add some sh you know, darker areas of colour. If I remember rightly, the nice thing about these is that they still will, if you don't add them too darkly, they will let some of this background pattern and texture shine through. You, you, can't, you can barely see it in places, but it's still there. So let's have a look. Pop some under here. And I think that will work quite nicely. They're very bright on screen. They're not as bright to my eyes. Um, but I don't want to add this colour to every one of these. So I'll just do this one and then let me have a think. I'll think out loud and I'll have a look. Because I'm looking for a colour that would tie in. Part of me thinks I should have gone with blues for a night sky. But... Um, I think that could have ended up looking messy with blue and orange. They don't mix well together. Um, so if I stay with the orangey kind of theme, I do have an orange orange, but I also have this, which is quite an orangey red or slightly ready orange. So let's have a look and see how this one. Yeah, that's more orangey in color. That's 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 nice. That works nicely. So I'm just paying attention to these um, these background tiles at the moment and I'm wondering whether a lighter orangey yellow might, oh I don't think ye yellow might show up but I'm going to go with a lighter orange. So I've got three shades of colour here. I've got um, well that's nice that's almost a yellowy colour let's see if it will work on here it should do ish it's not as well but it will add a variation to that colour that's there it does and um, I think I work with I'll carry on working with these so I've got a couple of Carbothellos and um, a Generals chalk pastel
and I'll carry on doing all of these because it's going to take me a bit of time and as if by magic I'll come back with it finished. So in a moment, see you again. There we are. That's all the background crazy paving done really. And um, now I've got to decide what I do about these, the pebbles, the, you know, the, the bits there. Because I want them to stand out. I don't want them to be separate. And I, I also thought as I was adding these, I thought, darn it. I missed that an opportunity where I could have put patterns with a brush and gold and copper in there and then added um, the pastel on the top like I did with that drawing yesterday, which is most probably over here somewhere or medieval drawing I was doing where I added chalk pastel over the gold here and you can see that it's it's actually coloured it very slightly so I've got orangey red fading into pure gold which I thought was quite nice it was a nice way to add some shadow and interest to those but I didn't so I now have this explosion of these colours and I've now got to work out how do I make these things stand out how and I've still got this year to tackle so part of me is thinking Shall I go with a complementary colour? Shall I paint them? Because they do need something to bring them out. Um, painting them I don't think is going to be an option unless I use the metallics. But I don't want to use more metallics because um, I would lose these little beautiful glowing centres. Just going over a bit where the this metallic has spilled out. I think I've done it, but I think the mica finds its way to the surface again. So I think it may be a case of looking at what colours I could use here that would stand out or help these to stand out. I've got a magenta here and I'm going to try it out. Possibly. This is where I need a piece of scrappy paper. Here's some scrappy paper. So I've got that colour, I've got this one, I've got this one, and this one. And let's have a look at what happens if I put them next to one another. And does that magenta stand out? It actually reminds me of British monks robes, <laughs> which is a common feature with me. But I think that might work because it will stand out against the others. But let me have a look for another colour as well, because perhaps I'll go with a, a pinky colour as well. So let me have a look at that next to these as well. I think both... I, that's it, that feels more of a mucky colour, so I'll pop that kind of colour back. Oh, I've just spotted that one. This one. And if I spread that one out, so they're a bit garish. Let me have a look at a. I'm sure, I will find it. There it is. I think possibly no, it's not the colour I was looking for. But a green. Nope. 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 About this kind of colour because it's the complementary colour really to orange and I think that would help those to stand out so let me just scrub all that the ends off a bit cleaner while I'm at it so that I'm if I mix my ends up I'm not going to get into a pickle with colour blending because you do get an awful colour if you mix complementary colours in fact I'm going to get my piece of sandpaper here and I'm just going to give them a quick clean on here it just takes that top layer off that's been um, that's been discoloured with the chalk pastels off I'm going to think carefully where I put this colour because I will want to get it to fade out and have a darker surface. The worst thing that happens is I go, ugh, 
and I may do because bearing in mind there's orange underneath this so it's going to blend with the colour underneath but does that perhaps that's not quite as shabby as I thought I, I'm not too keen at all so as I go and dig and delve for moments I know what I'm looking for and I'm hoping it's in here it is I've got my very fine eraser here so I should be able to just take this back I think my best bet actually for adding colour here to these might be to use um, I'm going to go with some ink tents I've got the dark indigo I've got my water brush and let's have a look at this because indigo usually works nicely with everything and the other thing is this the, the dampness of the water brush will move that distress ink as well this one could be the most horrible looking one of the lot but I'm going to go with indigo on this one and then I'm going to go and find that autumn brown one I think hopefully I can see it in here it should be in here huh. do you think I can see it no don't be silly oh there it is upside down and I also think I think I've got a lovely not shadow but aubergine aubergine might work port red definitely would there's the port and I was looking for where's that one that's the ocean blue I don't think that one will to be honest work with these three because I think these will work the nicest the autumn brown will tone in nicely with the background color and it's dark enough to help it to stand out hopefully so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to oh look I managed to color that one in all the way around what an idiot. Oh, but no, no, that's fine. It wasn't one of these. It was, that's okay. Um, how I how I add this kind of colour with these is I tend to, rather than do them one at a time, I'll use one colour, go around and sort of like make sure it's kind of spread out that little bit so you haven't got the same colour side by side really. And then I'll do all of the water, uh, the, the water brushing afterwards. So give me a moment to, um, I'll go away and I'll go and do this off camera and I'll come back and we can see what a mess I've made of this. Okay, so see you in a moment. Okie dokes, back for a quick check-in because um, I sort of like had an idea, didn't I? And as usual, I don't think things through fully. So I added um, the graffiti tint pencils to the bigger sections of the, the Morisot and I started colouring them and I thought, oh, why don't I use some of that iridescent mica with my water brush and fill them in that way. So that's exactly what I did. So they have a lot more shimmer and shine than the flat um pastel background um, I've had to go over some of the black lines because I wasn't very careful but then I decided okay I, th I thought why have I used graphite tint pencils when all I could needed to do really was to choose some distress inks and pop them in my palette and use them in that kind of way so for this I went back to the palette and for the sections in between I decided to go with this feeling of like a bracelet or a necklace or some such thing and I used the aged mahogany, there might have been a bit of the um, espresso, what, I can't remember what it's called, 
but I know it's got espresso in it um, there and in this case I really wasn't very fussy about um, not going over that central line because it does disappear it does have some shine on it and I'm quite happy for that so that's where we are for now next thing I want to do is to start to add some interest pattern to break these big areas up a little bit and for that I am going to use I must probably wreck my O2 pen because I'm going to be working on pastels I could use my biro but I think my biro will clog up even quicker so I'm going to use this I was thinking about doing it with uh, paintbrush and gold but I thought no I'm going to go with black I could have used I could use one of the brown um, O1 pens but I decided against that because I want this I like black and I'm going to use the way the lines are concentrated in one area to add that depth so here the tip of this shape where I'm starting the lines from is where there's going to be lots of lines close together so it will give it that feeling of being in shadow or further away and so I'm going to do all of this and I'm also going to do this on these ones like so to bring that feeling of depth and dimension again and um, just to add that that interest so I'll be back again this is a very bitty video for you but it would be hours long if you were with me all the way through so I'll see you in, again in a moment once I've done all of these things bye bye for now well here I am back once again and I finished this I have and it's may not have been exactly what I expected or anybody else did but I have got a lot of sparkle and shine onto this one I do and you can see what I've done I'm glad I did black lines in these smaller sections at the bottom because that really helps to push them a bit backwards but to bring out a feeling that they're not just flat as well um, you know this one appears to be pointing up this way and going down here this one the other way so it really does feel like totally completely crazy paving of some kind or another but it also allows the other um, parts of Morisot to stand out this one once I've added all the lines in to those sort of biconical beads in the middle of the squares I realized that I didn't want I liked that so much that I thought right I'm going to put black in the other sections and then when I put black in I thought oh that's a bit stark and plain so I added copper dots dots of copper not perfectly because I you know my brush skills aren't exactly legendary for being good and then I thought well the black here looks a bit stark as well so I'm going to add some gold dots in there and I just feel this is done Part of me thinks I ought to do something with these borders that are plain and blank, but I don't know what. And if I try to do it now, I'm going to wreck what I have done, I think. So as it stands, I am quite happy with this. Um, part of me thinks I really should have done it just in black and white and perhaps just a bit of shadowing in some way. But... It is what it is. I'm glad I did the metallics. It's made me smile. Metallics always do. So, as I finish this particular video, I'd like to say thank you for joining me. I know this one's a bit of a mammoth one. Um, it could have been a lot longer if I'd showed every single thing. Bear that in mind. I'm beginning to learn or remember that I can stop the video and start it again without blathering on. But once again, I'd like to thank you all for joining me, for subscribing to my channel, for leaving lovely comments. And I would like to wish each and every one of you a 
very good 2022 and a very creative one as well. So until I see you again, which will be in 2022, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves and find time to be creative. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.